One minute ago, a violent swarm of quakes shook half a million people in Naples, marking the strongest movement inside Campi Flegre in 40 years. Evacuations began, trains stopped, and scientists say this sudden escalation is unlike anything they've seen in decades. What's causing this accelerating crisis beneath Europe's most dangerous volcanic zone? Why are experts admitting their evacuation plans may not work? And what newly uncovered weakness inside the caldera suggests the worst may still be ahead? But this was only the first warning. Since seismic activity occurred in 2024 at a depth of up to 3 kilometers, the expected magnitude of earthquakes is around 4.4 to 4.5 magnitude. Yet recent events have already exceeded these predictions. The ridge of Panada Islet collapsed during the earthquake, which struck at approximately 1247 local time on June 30. Entire landforms are being reshaped by forces most scientists believed were dormant. The crisis has reached a tipping point that even veteran volcanologists describe as unprecedented. Fabio Florendo, president of the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, warned that the Campi Flegre are a national emergency during his testimony to Italy's parliamentary commission. What came next shocked even the scientists. Eight miles west of Naples, an AI model applied to seismic data from Italy's Campi Flegre caldera identified over four times more earthquakes than previous methods and revealed previously unknown faults. The hidden network of fractures forms a ring-shaped pattern that encircles the entire caldera like a ticking time bomb. The ring fault alignment suggests that any future bursts of shaking may circle the uplifted zone. Within the red zone, there are approximately 500,000 residents. Beyond that danger area, in the yellow zone, there are over 800,000 residents. The scale of human exposure dwarfs any volcanic emergency response plan ever attempted. The caldera itself spans 12 miles of seemingly ordinary Italian countryside. Part of the city of Naples is built over it. Shopping centers, apartment blocks, ancient ruins, and busy harbors sit atop a volcanic system that, in the past 40,000 years, has produced two of the largest eruptions in Europe. And the signs were already spreading. The Campi Flegre caldera began forming 39,000 years ago through an eruption so massive it ranks among the most violent in human history. During the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption, the most violent in the Mediterranean area with a volume of magna emitted between 100 and 150 cubic kilometers, pyroclastic flows buried two-thirds of Campania under a thick blanket of tough deposits. The explosion emptied underground magma chambers so completely that the land above collapsed inward, creating a crater wider than Manhattan. 15,000 years later, a second catastrophic eruption struck the same region. The Neapolitan Yellow Tuff eruption, in which the volume of magma emitted was 20 to 30 cubic kilometers, resulted in the formation of a smaller caldera inside the first one. The nested craters created a complex volcanic system that has never truly quieted. Since that ancient collapse, at least 70 smaller eruptions have punctured the caldera floor. The most recent occurred in 1538, when an eruption built the hill called Monte Novo in just a few days. Entire villages vanished beneath rivers of superheated ash. Parish records describe darkness at noon and ground shaking so violent that homes split open like cracked eggs. But the ground had one more secret. A recent study by the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology has identified a more fragile than expected zone in the Earth's crust beneath the caldera of Campi Flegre. This weak layer sits just 3 to 4 kilometers below the surface, acting like a pressure cooker's failing lid. During so-called Brady seismic crises, the increased pressure in this deep reservoir can trigger the swelling, uplift of the ground, and the fracturing of the rocks, resulting in seismic activity. The phenomenon driving today's crisis is called Bradycism, a slow, relentless breathing of the Earth itself. 
From 2005 to today, a new phase of Brady Sism has been underway, which in April 2025 produced an uplift of about 144 centimeters. The ground beneath Pozzuoli has risen nearly five feet, cracking buildings and warping roads with the inexorable force of tectonic pressure. Modeling of ground deformation data during 2007 to 2023 and petrologic simulations allowed to define the ascent of magma from 8 kilometers depth. This caused the expansion of a deforming source at shallower depths that from about 6 kilometers reached about 4 kilometers since 2015. The magma reservoir is climbing closer to the surface with each passing year. Recent monitoring has revealed accelerating changes that defy previous models. The ground has begun rising at a faster rate, reaching an average rate of about 25 millimeters per month. This represents a 70% increase from earlier in 2025 when uplift had stabilized at 15 millimeters monthly. What is the most immediate danger? In the Piciarelli hydrothermal field, automated sensors now register temperatures that would have been unimaginable just years ago. A colleague with a drone estimated temperatures from the fumaroles over 140 degrees centigrade, according to INGV President Florindo. At Solfatera, one of the most active points of the caldera, the surface temperature reached 168 degrees while the hydrothermal system touched 350. The flow of carbon dioxide is impressive, about 5,000 tons per day, emitted in the area between Solfatera and Piciarelli. These invisible gases seep through fractured ground accumulating in basements and underground spaces where they can displace oxygen and create deadly traps. The new research expands the seismicity recorded by monitoring stations from 2022 to 2025 from about 12,000 to more than 54,000 earthquakes. AI analysis has revealed a hidden world of fractures that conventional monitoring missed entirely. The data revealed two faults converging under the town of Pozzuoli, west of Naples. But this was not the most chilling discovery. These long faults suggest that an earthquake in the magnitude 5 range is not out of the question, said study co-author Bill Ellsworth. Such a tremor would represent double the strength of the largest quakes recorded in recent memory, with the potential to trigger widespread building collapses in a region where structures were never designed for such forces. The scientific uncertainty grows more troubling with each new measurement. Quote, the explosions for Tachi are related to heated gases under pressure above the chamber. If they come into contact with aquifers at normal temperature, explosions occur that launch everything they find on the surface into the air. They can kill they can also be of considerable size. Phreatic explosions give no warning, they are instantaneous, warned President Florindo. And the ground was getting closer to breaking. For Maria Rossi, a 67-year-old grandmother living just three blocks from the PCRLE fumaroles, the crisis has transformed daily life into a test of endurance. Each morning, she checks the walls of her small apartment for new cracks, running her fingers along fissures that seem to grow wider with every tremor. The heat comes through the floor now, she says, her voice steady despite the worry etched in her face. At night, I move my bed to the center of the room because the outer walls are too warm to touch. Her building, constructed in the 1960s when Brody Sizemly barely understood, was never designed to withstand the relentless ground movement. Mineral deposits have begun forming along her baseboards, yellow and white crusts that appeared seemingly overnight. The air carries a metallic tang that catches in the throat, especially after rain when gases push harder through the expanding cracks. Insurance companies refuse to cover the damage, citing volcano exclusion clauses. Property values have collapsed and selling has become impossible. We watch the steam rise from the street every morning, Maria says quietly, and every evening we check if the paint is blistering more. But experts remain divided about what the data actually means. Some researchers interpret the climbing magma and increasing seismicity as clear warning signs of potential eruption. Others argue that the current unrest may simply represent another cycle of inflation and deflation that could continue for years without catastrophic release. Werner Marzocchi, a professor of geophysics and natural risk at the University of Naples, acknowledged that, quote, this kind of volcanic system are used to have phases of unrest, like this one that we are observing. The biggest scientific challenge is to understand what is the drive behind this unrest. 
The AI analysis suggests that current activity stems from gas and pressure buildup rather than direct magma ascent, which reduces short-term eruption risk. Yet Marzocchi warns that, quote, it's unlikely, fortunately, but it's not zero. And in that case, we do not have any possibility to reduce the risk because we can't stop a volcano. Florindo underlined that the most critical point is the ostroni Agnano area, where according to the scenarios developed, there is a 40 to 50% probability that an eruptive vent capable of generating pyroclastic flows will open. These scorching avalanches of gas and debris can reach speeds of 100 kilometers per hour and temperatures exceeding 400 degrees centigrade. The scientific disagreements extend to the timeline of potential danger, with some models suggesting weeks of warning before any eruption, while others point to the possibility of sudden catastrophic failure. Yet the most frightening uncertainty lies in what no one can predict. Civil protection officials face a nightmare scenario that challenges every assumption about emergency response. The red zone includes the municipalities of Pozzuoli, Bacoli, Monte di Procida, and Quarto, and some of the municipalities of Giuliano in Campania, Barano di Napoli, and some municipalities in Naples, for a total area of 500,000 inhabitants. Once the alarm is declared, the entire population must leave the red zone and can choose to do so independently or with assistance. The estimated total time for this operation is three days, the first 12 hours will be used to allow people to prepare, while the next 48 hours will be used to allow everyone to leave all municipalities in the red zone. The mathematics of evacuation revealed the true scope of the crisis. Moving half a million people requires 10,000 buses working around the clock. The plan includes transfer by ship, train, or bus to twin cities and regions scattered across Italy. But the infrastructure connecting the red zone to the outside world consists of just a handful of highways and rail lines, all of which pass through areas that could be blocked by earthquake damage or volcanic debris. If the level turns orange, the pre-alarm phase usually kicks in. In this situation, in the red zone, people present in hospitals, four, as well as several nursing homes and penitentiaries, two, are expected to be transferred. Moving immobile patients and prisoners adds layers of complexity that have never been tested at such scale. The government has earmarked 500 million euros for evacuation procedures, but critics question whether any amount of money can solve the fundamental problem of moving an entire city's population in just three days. But the most dangerous moment may be right now. Recent exercises revealed critical flaws in the evacuation strategy. Roads designed for normal traffic buckle under the weight of mass exodus. Communication systems fail when overwhelmed by simultaneous usage. The evacuation plans require the displacement of several million people in several days prior to the eruptions, but are unreliable from the technical, socioeconomic, and cultural perspectives. Even more troubling is the assumption that authorities will have adequate warning. Phreatic explosions give no warning. They are instantaneous, according to INGV President Florindo. Such explosions could occur with zero advance notice, potentially trapping hundreds of thousands of people in a danger zone that becomes impassable within minutes. The social dynamics of mass evacuation present equally daunting challenges. Historical precedent from previous Brady seismic crises shows that many residents refuse to leave, either from attachment to their homes or disbelief about the danger. Others lack the resources to relocate, even temporarily. Some half a million people are in the red zone, the area authorities say would have to be evacuated for people to survive an eruption. Yet no evacuation of this magnitude has ever been attempted in modern times, and experts privately acknowledge that the plan remains largely theoretical. Scientists know that since April 2025, the average uplift has held near 15 millimeters per month. The recent measurements show acceleration to 25 millimeters monthly. They know that AI analysis has revealed over four times more earthquakes than previously detected and identified a clear ring fault beneath the caldera. They know that fumarole temperatures have exceeded 140 degrees Celsius and CO2 emissions reach 5,000 tons daily. What remains unknown is when this accelerating system will reach its breaking point. 
the weak layer in the Earth's crust acts as a pressure accumulator that could fail catastrophically or continue building stress for years. No computer model can predict whether the next earthquake swarm will be the one that triggers a larger collapse. Scientists cannot predict if or when a major eruption might occur, and many monitoring stations have suffered outages during critical periods. The very instruments designed to provide warning have proven vulnerable to the forces they were meant to monitor. The accelerating pattern of ground uplift, increasing temperatures, and multiplying earthquake swarms are documented facts. The discovery of the hidden ring fault and the magma ascent from 8 kilometers to 4 kilometers depth represent verified scientific observations. But in a system where half a million people live directly above a supervolcano that has been quiet for only 500 years out of its 40,000 year active history, Perhaps the most unsettling question is not whether Campi Flagre will erupt again, but whether those living above it will have any warning when it finally does.